Hello, my name is John Speck. Welcome to this All 24 video. Uh, today, Coach Waterman and I are joined by a special guest. Coach Tommy Kanichis is the new offensive coordinator at St. Mary's University. How are you doing, Coach? Fantastic, gentlemen. How are we doing? Great. Doing really well. Looking forward to having you on. And you're going to talk us through some, uh, some game planning. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Some film analyzing, report creating, stuff like that. I appreciate you guys having me on, by the way. Thank you very much. Oh, so yeah, like I said, today we're going to kind of talk about analyzing film and creating reports. Um, I think it's something that is important at, at all levels of the game um, and sometimes is, uh, is overlooked as, by us as coaches. Um, you know, a lot of times we all feel guilty of telling our players to go watch more film, go analyze more film. Same with our staff. But don't give them a process on how to do it. So uh, that's kind of one of what I want to talk about today. Um, so yeah, like you said, Coach, Coach Tom Benitez, offensive coordinator, O-line coach at St. Mary's. Um, I attached my email here for anybody interested in kind of seeing this again or just want to chat about anything football. Um, my Twitter and Instagram here at the bottom as well. If anybody's interested in giving it a follow and just chatting football, I'm always open to talk some, talk some game. So, uh, yeah, let's get it going. So today's goals are to implement and understand a simple way to watch film, uh, analyze film and understand what information is necessary to run reports and prepare for opponents. Um, it's a simple way to analyze for all levels. It's the big thing that's important to me is I don't want to necessarily focus on just youth sport. I think this is something that can be utilized at uh, the grassroots level, the high school level, uh, into youth sport level. So where do we start? Um, you know, I'm a big believer that we start kind of working our way backwards. So uh, obviously you got to start with your, your data reports page, um, which is something we'll talk about a little bit more once I kind of give an example of it. Um, but some programs like Huddle and DV Sport I already have these report pages built in, um, which you can take advantage of, which are great. Um, but I'm also one of those guys that like to have it in Excel as well. That way, if I ever got to look back at it or move numbers around, it kind of gives me an opportunity to do that. Um, so I always start with going through the film and watching it in an analytical way of not actually evaluating players or concepts or what we're doing or what the opponent's doing. I'm more so just actually filling in the report on, okay, this concept is this, not breaking down how the defense runs it, or uh, kind of what their tweaks or adjustments are, just here's our coverage, here's our blitz, here's the front, here's the back end adjustment, so on and so forth. Um, and then I created this a couple years ago, um, this what I call the fart method. It was something I did with some younger guys. Uh, it was easier for them to remember, but it kind of breaks down into the acronym of, of formation front, assignment adjustment, rep, and then technique and talent. And this is um, kind of the real multi-step process when we really start to analyze and break down the film and prepare for our opponent. Um, you know, as we talk today, I'm kind of be speaking from an offensive perspective um, and kind of how I would prepare for defenses and, and so on and so forth. So um, we'll start with kind of creating your report and data sheet. Um, so the first thing you always want to get is your quarters. Obviously, you want to analyze how the game's adjusted and the differences based on quarter, how the defense is playing or how you're playing as an offense. Um, but second to that would be our down and distance, uh, which we have in the first, second and third column here, and then by field zone. Uh, you know, coordinators, offensively, defensively, we all have tendencies, and a lot of times you can catch those tendencies based on field zones and down and distances. Um, so for me, those are kind of the first things I want to look at. Um, you know, when we talk about huddle and front and stuff like that, it sometimes already is automatically input, which is great, kind of saves you a little bit on that. Um, third to that would be our run or pass. Again, just to kind of give you a tendency of yourself as a play caller offensively, how often are we running the ball? How often are we passing the ball? Uh, gives us an opportunity to see what are our tendencies amongst those down and distances, amongst the field zone. Um, you know, are we more of a pass team between the 40s, more of a run team between the 40s, more of a run team on first down or second down, so on and so forth. Um, from there, I'd like to actually start by analyzing ourselves, which would be our offensive formation, any kind of motion that we have in place. Um, I think it's important to keep track of all the different motions and movements. I'm a big believer in taking advantage of defenses by motion, by attacking the front, and trying to find weaknesses in how our defenses adjust to what we're doing with our movement. Um, so offensive formation, offensive motions, and then we're going to look at the defensive front and any front adjust that occurs. So can I ask you a quick question, coach? Sorry definitely. to cut you off, but it's something that I've been wondering and, you know, yep. it, it kind of is, is on point here. It's just when you're coding, uh, how are you coding RPOs? You have a run pass, a column yeah. and it's it's kind of built into huddle that it's run past so how are you coding those yeah. these days it's well, so i'll actually analyze them when i put it down um in the huddle i'll break it down as whatever it occurs to be whether it becomes a run or a pass just so i can have that true breakdown number but in my excel sheets i'll break it down as an rpo so i can not actually sure. put one in rpo uh, so for our, our huddle reports i'll do it as like i said just a straight run or pass um, yeah 
So, like I was saying, um, you know, we're going to take a look at the defense, the front end first, the box, the front seven, and any kind of adjust that that front box has to anything. If we add a tight end into the box, how does the box adjust? If we add an extra running back into the box, how does the box adjust to the add-in man, so on and so forth. Um, from there, I go into what any kind of back end adjustments there are. So if we have a receiver that spins into the box again, let's say into a tailback spot, how does the defense react? Do they bump the linebackers? Do they spin over the top? If we go from a 32 set to a 41 set, how does the defense adjust in the back end? Do they chase? Again, do they spin? Do they bump? All those kind of different things, which again, help us find different ways to take advantage. Um, from that point, we get into what kind of coverage we're seeing. And then I like to go with blitz and blitz type as two different categories. Um, you know, the blitz, yes or no, kind of tells us, okay, how often are these guys running blitzes, regardless of what type of blitz it is. Um, and then our blitz type will kind of just tell us, okay, whether it's, you know, Mac A gap, Mac C gap, Mac B gap, Will, Sam, whatever it is, you can type that in analytically. Um, then from that point, number of rushers. This is one that I seem to find quite a bit in field zone that defenses have tendencies for. Um, you know, if you're backed up, you're going to see sometimes a little more bodies coming at you. Um, you know, if you're in that score zone, sometimes you're going to see more bodies coming after you. And it really gets to help you find those tendencies of what your opponent is doing. Um, and then our stunt and stunt type kind of falls in the same category as our blitz and blitz type. What are they running any stunts? How often do they run stunts? When do they run stunts? Do they wait till second and long, second and medium, first and 10? Obviously, every team has different tendencies. What type of stunts are they running? Is it true twists? Is it loops? Whatever it is um, that you feel necessary to know. Uh, something that anything that's changed or different from what you've seen before, it's just a category for you to be able to fill that in and track how often that happens. The team drops the rush or drops their anchor or likes to go in a seven up look, plus one look, whatever it is. Um, it kind of gives you an opportunity to track that. So this is what it would kind of look like as a blank sheet, everything filled in. And then after watching our film, I just kind of threw a, a few different things in here. Um, you know, I'm, I like to break it up by series as well. Um, but here's kind of what it would look like after breaking it all down. So we can run reports based off of these numbers, uh, which again, uh, the biggest tell is what are the tendencies of our opponent and what are the tendencies of ourselves? What are we doing? You know, the defenses are going to prepare for us offensively the same way we're going to prepare for them. Uh, you know, I don't want to be too caught in having the same tendency all the time. Some and coach, them, just uh, sorry to interrupt you there, yeah. just as you mentioned that talking about yourself and uh, self-analysis, how often do you do that throughout the course of a season where you sort of stop and look at your own tendencies? I like to do that weekly. Um, I think it's something that's extremely important, you know, and, and saying that I don't like to break tendencies because um, I think there's a reason why they occur. Um, but it is something just, you know, how our defense is adjusting to these tendencies. Again, if we're a, a run heavier, RPO heavy first down team, hypothetically, Right. How our defense is going to adjust to us from week one to week three if we consistently are doing that. And if they're starting to you know, catch on to it or starting to find ways to defeat it, okay, now we have to adjust or manipulate what we're doing. Um, so, yeah, so with this data sheet, like I said, we can run different reports. I've kind of put together a few different reports um, to just kind of show these are all hypothetical numbers from just a fake report that I put together. But you can kind of show us, okay, based on the field zone here, what I would call the free zone. Um, you know, number of rushers, uh, we had four, the number of four rushers, 46 times out of 173 plays. So it's 51.7% of the time. So I can know, okay, if I'm prepping for this team and we're in the free zone, uh, more than half the time, we're going to get four rushers. Um, you know, six rushers, they brought it 12 times out of 173 plays, 13.5%. Okay, between the free zone, I don't have to be too concerned by that. Um, you know, we're only going to bring it 13.5 out of 173 plays. Um, but in saying that, you know, the way I would kind of break it down even further is, okay, let's see down in distance how often they're bringing this. You know, is it, is it second down they're bringing six guys? Is it first down they're bringing six guys? Second and medium, second and long, whatever it is based on the defensive coordinator and defensive team we're playing. Um, you know, this is just a few different numbers. Like I said, in the wind zone, what I would call kind of uh, between the 40s, you know, in this case, or sorry, backed up, um, you know, here's the kind of pressures we're seeing. So, again, four, bringing the four-man rushes what we're seeing the most, um, you know, I can expect that to be just our D-line unless this is a team where I see a lot of, like we talked about earlier, DN drop, no tackle drop, have some fun with it, stuff like that. Um, and then the score is on, okay, we're still 14, 14 guys. Uh, this team, you know, most of the time we're going to see four rushes. That's what I need to prepare for. My expectation is, you know, whoever this team is, they probably got a hell of a D-line that likes to get after it and they feel confident, you know, kind of protecting the back end, having their front four taking care of the job 
be going from that point. They don't feel the need to blitz a ton. Um, you know, another one is kind of coverages. So at this point, okay, we're first and 10. Um, you know, this three double cut is kind of the three DC is the code I use for it. Okay, we, ha we did run this 25 times out of 173 plays, 26.3%. So for the time on first and 10, I got to expect some kind of cover three double cut. Um, cover four, they'll run it 10 times out of 173 plays, 10.5% on first and 10. I don't have to be too concerned about it, but it is something that they do. And again, I would break this down as well by field zone. Because there's certain areas on the field where the defense wants to run that cover four. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of different coverages here, our two zone, our match, uh, the two robber, three double hold, cover zero. Um, you know, what are the main tendencies of how this defense wants to run? You know, we can see here um, a second and long, you know, uh, cover zero, they like to bring pressure. You know, something that we need to keep in mind now as we prepare in second and long situations, this team, wherever this team is, hypothetically, we got to expect pressure on second and long. Um, so a few different ways of how we can take advantage of reports right there and prepare us to find those tendencies and defenses in our opponents um, and how these numbers from these reports break down into that. 